Right, what have I got here? Boosh! It is a headlamp. Well, I say boosh, it's more of a, a thump, listen, than a boosh. And the reason it's more of a thump is because this is a ultra lightweight headlamp. So I'm always looking at headlamps. We all know about the big impressive ones. Look at this, you can see right across a field and pick out an owl flying past and things like that. Excellent, love them. You know, they've got like the high CRI, they've got the main beam, they've got loads of lumens, you know, I think this is something like 2,500 or something on, on turbo, and you have your red light modes and everything. Plenty of capacity, but sometimes you don't need all that. And when you don't need all of that, this is what you look at. So Night Course sent me this, they said Trail Trek, this is this this time this really is right up your street because you're always trekking about have a look at this we'll send you this um have a look at it we don't tell you what to put in the review we don't edit it we don't say it say it, whatever you like so i've done an honest review and this is what this is so this is the night core NU21. So um, I was really, really looking forward to having a look at this because um, I've got a few friends who've done like long distance marathon -y type things. And there was someone at work who did like an ultra marathon where they ran across the country and it took them, you know, something like ridiculous, like 20 hours or something. It's something I've, I love trail running, but I don't really want to spend all day and all night doing it. But for those people who do, weight comes at a massive premium. And it's not just these people who do the Pacific Crest Trail and, and, and trails in America where they have an ultralight um, ethos. In other words, they don't want to be carrying a lot because they're doing like multi-day, multi-week hikes and stopping off, which again, weight is very important. And that's kind of what they're going for here. I mean, in, on the website, if you look at it, it's not just people wandering around and fishing and going for a little walk. They've got multiple, I think, Chinese athletes and there's a, a Western athlete there and they look like ultra distance sort of runners and things like that so they are by the very fact that they've got that on the website there for this says to me that that's kind of what they're aiming that at and that's why this is very stripped down very lightweight so yes yeah, straight off people might go how many 360 lumens what a load of rubbish but that's kind of the point it's very light i mean they're claiming all in 44 grams so you know compare that to something like this i mean listen listen to the distance that, that's the box hardly anything and this is just the hc65 v2 listen boosh in fact i did it the wrong way there boom crunch you know did that drop on your toe you know about it if this does it bounces off so we'll go over what this is we'll have a quick look at the box and then i'll quickly get on with this and i'll try to make it rapid so like i say it is the night core maximum of 360 lumens there are three colors available even though it looks like there's just two and they've missed one off they haven't um, it comes in white that's what i've been reviewing and testing you can get it in a traditional black which is like the same color as the the clip here and it, although it's hard to tell it comes in yellow they've got daft names like speed yellow you know cocaine white or whatever I, I don't know daft names i don't play that game they do that with phones now where they're saying this isn't a black phone this is obsidian black no no it's black okay let's just you know let's just calm down here so here are the claims they've got here it's got ultra lightweight headband it is it's not a traditional one so on most of the most of the lights you get this you know the granny's nickel elastic that goes around your head this they've gone for an extremely lightweight reflective and glow in the dark material at first glance you may look at that and say that looks cheap and rubbish it isn't and it works and it mimics in fact if you have a look up here because i'm not going to go and get a load of shoes out the closet for people but the the solomon speed lace system which i use for a lot of trail shoes it, it does work it looks cheap but it, it isn't and you get them on the high end high spec high price shoes it's a really quick way to cinch down the whole foot there and they don't catch they are really decent so that they've kind of gone for that with this ultra light system so we'll get rid of that there boosh so that's what they've gone for here and they are saying usb charging included so nice they've actually put the damn cable in and it is a type c excellent marks for me now yes it's only a 500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that's not a lot i mean if you compare it to here is the ace beam so just as a comparison it's lithium ion this is a lithium ion in here just to prove it i shall show you 
rechargeable high capacity lithium ion now that's this isn't particularly big it is basically a 14500 which is the same size as a double a battery but look capacity is 920 yeah, 920 milliamp hours now on this it's only 500 so you're not getting a lot although on its maximum setting because it's not that high it's only 360 lumens that doesn't matter so much but i would have liked to have seen a higher capacity even though I get that the higher the capacity, the bigger the battery. The bigger the battery, the higher the weight. I get it. It's all a balancing act. And there's a little bit on the bottom. So there you go. So you've got your red lights, which are the two there. And then, although it's got two, which is very similar to the NU33. Here's the NU33. You have multiple beams here. You've got a high CRI, a main beam, and a red light mode. Um, although it has two, they're both doing exactly the same job. Um, it's not a high CRI, it's something about 80%, I think it was 16, uh, sorry, 70% CRI, and I'll go over that, don't worry. And they are claiming it is weatherproof. It's not fully waterproof, you couldn't, you couldn't submerge this, but that's not what this is designed for. It's very lightweight and a, and a cheaper alternative to something like this, where it's IPX8 and you are totally covered, even if you dive into, into some water. So IP66, so it's dustproof and weatherproof, not waterproof, okay got your white light it's got a nice power indicator and two buttons but we'll go over that so enough enough looking at this you want you want to see so I put this all back in the box and i have tested this i've been out for two trail runs i've been out hiking multiple multiple times i've used this for weeks so let's have a little look so this is what you get it's very simple there's the box boosh get rid of that and boosh get rid of that not interested there's the actual light itself look the size of that look tiny look if i wrap that up it's almost lost in my hand there. Very, very small. You get the cable, which I've tested and put back, and it's got one of these little cinches on. And there's the instructions, which I can't be bothered to read because uh, I'm a man and we don't do that sort of thing. Until we look at it later on and go, ah, that's why that blew up. Whoops. So there you go. If you really want to, you can... I've done it in 4K. Hang on. There. Pause that and have a read, but I can't be bothered. Read that, and then there is the run times and all that malarkey. There, it's there if you want it, but I can't be bothered. Boosh, get rid of that. Okay, so let's discuss what this is. So it's the NU21. They are they are terming this as an ultra lightweight dual beam. It is dual. You have two. Interestingly, though, have you noticed how even though these are doing exactly the same thing, have you noticed how they're slightly different? Each is a TIR. However, you see the 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 faceted reflector bit around is smoked on that one, and it isn't on that one. And by doing that, you're getting a little bit of push there. Not a lot. It's certainly not a thrower. And then not so much there, but more width. It's quite interesting. You get a very smooth, even though it's a double a double emitter, it's a very smooth view. I'll, I'll show you later on. It's quite interesting. It, basically, it's just for close-up. There's no way you would use this to go, you know, duck hunting or whatever. You, you, you know, it's not for distance. It is for, as they term, like an ultra lightweight outdoor camping. Perfect. Yeah, you've got the red light mode. You've got the nice low mode, perfect for camping and an emergency light and for trail running and hiking. Okay, it's perfect for that. So I got the white, so I think that looks pretty, quite pretty. They are saying this is a PC, in other words, polycarbonate. It's pretty nice. It's basically like a tight of plastic. It feels extremely well. Listen, there's no, when I do that, listen, there's no flex or creaking or nothing there makes me think, and I have used this in bung this in out of bags nothing there makes me think oh this is cheap nothing it's got a nice flap it's enough and to lift it you just get your fingernail in there and pop it open and it is a type c as you can see there it's all very simple this looks like it's adjustable it isn't the only adjustment is five adjustments in regards to angle so if you imagine this is your head on this side here and then if you listen so i think it's i think it's five one two three four five yeah so you can have it at that angle right down to your feet if you're busy cooking or something and then all the way up to facing forward. So pretty nice. I like the design and you have your two red light modes there. It's TIR, which I think is a sensible thing because it's not a high output light. The higher the output, the more you can worry about throwing the light. That's not what this is designed for. I think they did a decent job. I quite like that. Interestingly as well, here's your main mode, uh, power button. And then you have modes which allow you to make changes to what's happening there. And these are little LEDs. So if you just momentarily press the mode button, watch, this will um, give you a visual indication of the charge level. So if you press this, watch, boop, 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 boop. So it is about 100%-ish. I have used it again this evening though. So I quite like that. It reminds me a little bit of the NU33. That's got a similar thing there. 
Although that, that hasn't got the little animation of going boop, 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 and showing you, and then duh, 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 duh. it just shows you straight off. So you press it, and it says, right, yeah, it's between 75 and 100%. I think that's a big, important thing. Yes, and I realise you can do this through the UI, and your own things like that. You press, you know, three times or whatever, and count the flickers. To the mass market, they probably don't want to count the flickers and then go, right, voltage, what does that mean again? They just want it simple. And in that regards, I think they've made it simple. So one of these is 25%. If two are lit up constantly, it's 50%, 75, and then 100, or between there anyway. So I think that's perfectly acceptable, and I like that. I think that's a decent feature. As I say, a very, very light, 44 grams. That's everything all in, including this. And I think this is decent to look at. It looks cheap, but this is reflective, and it is also glow-in-the-dark. And I'll just show you that if I turn this on. There you go. So we'll put the light on there just temporarily while I'm talking. So if you imagine you are in a light area and you move to a dark area, you could be in a car, a building or whatever. When you do that, because this is, well, because this has been done, in fact, look, look, how stupid am I look? That's why you don't use turbo, you see. Look, I've just burnt that. So, But anyway, actually, it's a good bit of testing because it shows that this is resilient. It's a fireproof. <laughs> Do you like that? So as I inhale those lovely fumes, I will move on with the review. And that's just stepped down there to save a little bit of heat. Okay, so we know that this is fireproof now. Now, has that gone glow in the dark? It has a bit. Look, can you see that there? But we'll give it a bit more. We'll use a safer light, though, eh? something with a little less power. Yeah, so we'll pop that on. And we'll let that charge up. So what it's doing is basically glow in the dark stuff. It, it accepts light in and then it gives that power back at, at a slower rate. So it, it, it illuminates. So if we turn that off, I mean, we are in a light environment here. But if I cover this up, you can see there that that is reflecting light on the white section. And in the glow in the dark section, it is green. I did actually find that quite useful. I was I was actually very happy about that. Um, I really like it because if I was in the car or whatever or in the house, I was able to put this in my pocket and when I came to get it, there was still a bit of glow left. It made it more easy to locate and use and I think that's an actual half decent feature. Yes, the glow in the dark doesn't last and after about you know 10 minutes it was down to nothing. But that instance between moving from a light area to a dark area, I think that was quite important and it does work. So I quite like that. Um, so again, it's only 360 lumens max, but I think it's enough for what it's intended for, put it that way. Uh, okay, so we need to cover the charging. So I've used this and I've used a couple of other cables, so we'll go through the usual test. So if we were to use their cable, so this is the one that they give you is a type A to type C. So we'll show you that working and I will just use a standard power pack here with some, this just happens to have some uh, 18650s in it. So if you happen to have a power pack, you could pop this on, boom. Just make sure that's on. Yes, that's on. In fact, that's about 100%. So if you want to charge this, you just click in your Type C, and then boom, there it charges. So five volts, but 500, 500 to 200 milliamp hours. So 0 0.2, 0 0.5 of an amp. It's not massively quick to charge. The reason for that is it hasn't got a very big cell, and as you can see. It's between 75% and 100. It shows you the charging progress. Again, another feature that I like. It also works whilst it's charging. Some lights don't, but watch. There, you can use it. You can actually go through all the levels as well. Look, some only allow one, but this is allowing them all. I think that's really important, including red light. I think that's good. So what, what you've got here is, you've got the ability to charge that, maybe as whilst you're at camp or doing something else. You can charge it and use it. That is a massive bonus. Also within that, you could have this with an extra long cable. You could have that in your pocket somewhere, have that hooked up, go on a mega, mega long hike or work all night and draw off this. That's giving you so many more options for power. Now in that regards, does it work with a type C to type C? Let's just test that. Now I happen to have one of those cables. So if you happen to just carry a type C to type C, let's see if that works. So pop it in the light and then pop it in here. Let's see what happens. And as you will see, there, 0 0.5. It'll drop it, it'll drop a bit because it's nearly full anyway. Yeah, down to 0 0.2. So it will drop because it's nearly full, so it, it drops to a sensible level. So it works type C to type C, and when type C to type C is on, still works and you can use it. So again, another option, you could have this in your back pocket and give you maximum run times. So brilliant. So charging I have no problems with. It's not very rapid, but it doesn't need to be. Okay, so turn that off. 
Okay, so like I say, only a 500 milliamp hour battery, but it's all about lightweight. I mean, that, that's almost nothing to it. In regards to lightweight, even the back is rudimentary. So you have this coming through these two holes like that. And then the bit that actually goes against your head, I want to show people this up close so they know exactly what they're getting. So at first glance, you might think, well, that doesn't look comfortable. But I'll put this behind. You see that pad there, that soft pad, it's very, very soft. It's almost like a sort of a high density foam. That's what it feels like to me, like a higher density foam. And that lifts it just enough. And when those touch, because it's so light, I didn't have any issues. I thought when I looked at this, I thought that's never going to be comfortable. I mean, compared to something like this, where it's curved, see how that's curved? Like the forehead, there's a slight curve on it. You know, unless you're, you know, Frankenstein or something, it's like a, an anvil. But I was a little bit worried, but, and in regards to things like this, these are all smoothed off and then you have this nice soft thing. With this, you don't get that because it's, because it's so light, it was okay. I hiked multiple times for rather a long time and trail ran and I didn't have any issues so just just to be aware of and in regards to that the attachment method like I say it's like a speed lace from Solomon and it's dead easy you just stick it on and then you have this it's a cinch so you just pull that and it changes the tightness simple as that really good no issues so you can you can basically do it with like put your I, I was putting my hand there and then pulling that easy easy to do so I like that no fuss Okay, so this comes with a one meter drop rating. So if you drop that one meter, as they are saying, it will su survive. It's so light and there's not a lot of mass to it. I can't imagine there being many issues with a light like this. And there's not many working parts. It's literally that and the main body. It's, it feels extremely well made. That, that doesn't, I've got no issues with that. It's only IP66, but I think that's probably all it needs because as a trail runner, you, you wouldn't go out in the mega, mega pouring rain for it for all night. And you certainly wouldn't be diving under waterfalls. If you are, you're going to have to get a better light on you. So you need to think of it that. And bear in mind, you know, you've just got that small flap there. So I would have liked to have seen that on the bottom. I don't know why they didn't put it on the bottom. I guess they didn't put it on the bottom so you can do that. And it doesn't get in the way if you want to run it whilst you're, whilst you're charging it. I guess that's why they did that. Because obviously if it was on the bottom and rain's coming down, it's going to be less likely to go in. But I guess that's a, it's a function issue. Anyway, but that's what they've decided to do. Okay, so let's go over the very simple UI on this. So UI, dead simple. So if you want ultra low, which is the lowest output you can get, you just double press there. So very, very low. They are saying that is six lumens. Uh, you're probably thinking, hang on, Trail Trek always complains and says he wants one lumen and things like that. I do, but not on a headlamp, because if you imagine a headlamp is further and further and further away, it's on your head. It's not like a flashlight where you have it up against the map. That's fine. Six lumens is fine because it's way back and it, it evens out. If it was a flashlight, I'd want a, a one lumen mode, but it isn't. That's fine. They're saying on this, if it's fully charged, you will get 37 hours. Pretty good. And then you have low, nice, 60 lumens, eight hours. I wasn't able to run or walk by this, but it's enough to do stuff in camp and things like that. And then you've got medium, which is 170 lumens, 3.5 hours is their claim uh, runtime. 170, I was fine walking. I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't run at that level, especially if it was wet and then high. So that's 360. That's the maximum you're going to get out of it. They are saying you will get two hours out of that. I think that's pretty impressive for something this small where you can just stick this on your head and you know you've got at least two hours of juice on the maximum. And if anything bad happens, you would turn it down, slow down and work your way back to, where, to camp or wherever you need it to be. Fine, I've got no problems with that. If you want to change from the main mode to the secondary mode to use these red lights, you just use your mode button. So there, so you can switch between the two. So you can go normal and your red light, normal and your red light. So there's your red light. The only problem I had with the red light, that is bright enough if it's a flashlight, but again, because it's up on your head, walking, I think that probably isn't enough. Uh, I preferred the red light on this was much brighter, much, much brighter on this. So, you know, I don't know what, so I'll, I'll show you if I go to red light. There, so that's the red light on the NU33, and this is still on, look. Okay, so we'll come in with that tiny amount. Red light on this, brilliant. I don't think this is enough for walking. It's fine if you're up close, if you're sitting cross-legged or you're trying to do a bit of cooking or just to camp or something like that. 
but I think they should have gone higher. But in order to do that, they probably should have put in a slightly larger cell. This is just me being picky though. If you just want a straightforward, very, very light headlamp, this is probably enough. It depends how much you're gonna be using red light, put it that way. But I certainly wouldn't wanna walk rather quickly with this. It wasn't quite enough. You know, you need a little bit more than that. Uh, in those, in this you have other modes, so you can go to, you've got a beacon mode, which is handy for rally points and attracting people's attention. So it just stays on and flashes, obviously. Now the red I should have mentioned on constant is five lumens and they're saying 26 hours. And then you've got back to normal again. And then you can have your beacon mode and normal. You also have modes in the normal normal mode, so if I remember rightly, you can have, there you go, you've got SOS on your main mode, so it flashes out SOS, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, all that malarkey. And you can also have a beacon mode. Now, how the, how the hell do you do that again? It's something like, is it that? There, that's beacon mode. So it will momentarily flash both of them at the same time, just quickly, momentarily, and then off, momentarily, and then off. So you have the option of a red light beacon or a white light beacon and turn that off. So very simple, I would say. You also have a lock, so if you hold these both down, watch. There, see that flash? Right, E-lock, done. So when you press it, you just get this momentary saying it's locked. I think that's brilliant. I think all headlamps should come with an E-lock because they get stuffed in pockets, they get stuffed in bags. You don't want that accidentally going on and then you're stuffed because you get the camp. I've mentioned this in many videos. You get there and the, the damn battery is flat and you feel like a complete idiot because you, you've got water, water to prepare and things to cook and the fires to get going. It, it's a nightmare, so I'll turn that off. Okay, so we need to talk about the pros and cons and I will we'll show you some beam shots as well. So in fact, we'll, we'll bring up some beam shots here, right? Bring up some shots here. Okay, so I went out and I tried to be as fair as possible. I held them at the same angle, the same, I pointed them at the same target. I put them on the same, you know, they're all at the maximum settings and, all, and the same exposure and all of that good stuff. And I pointed them at this target and this is what I came up with. So I tested it against the ace beam h16 which i showed you before that was the one with the small lithium ion 14500 cell and i think that does a decent job if you look at the colors of that and compare them to all of the others they're the best the color rendering on that is beautiful it's using an achia led and it looks very close to reality whereas the other ones all seem to have a green tinge or a yellow tinge and they don't necessarily reflect the totality of reality there's a there's a good saying for you the totality of reality in other words the color rendering index is lower on those other lights you are not getting the full color gamut that you would get from something like natural daylight which has a hundred percent color rendering index some of them can be as low as 60 percent this light happens to be about 70 and we'll cover that in a moment but on the ace beam, that looks lovely. It's also a nice warm tint, very nice. You've got a rather large circular section in the middle, which is kind of your push. And then to the sides, it's adequate. You could hike by that. So moving on to the Brynite HL16, also known as the HL16 Noctua. Uses a slightly different setup, different battery there, but it's very similar size and it has a magnetic base and all that. I'll go over that in a moment. But as you can see, it concentrates on how much push it can get in the middle, where it foregoes light at the sides. Now the problem with that is when you're hiking, you need, well, in my personal opinion, my humble opinion, you need light to the sides because that helps helps you make decisions on where you should be putting your foot and it helps you give you a better balance. That's just my personal opinion, especially if you're trail running, you really need that information going into your brain. I definitely wouldn't trail run with the Brynite, even though it's way more lumens, it's 520 lumens. Um, the ace beam is 650, I should have mentioned there. Sorry about that. These are both on their turbo settings. The Nebo Micro, I think, does a very good job. It's got that push in the middle, which is slightly wider than the ace beam. The tint isn't as nice, obviously, and you have a little bit of vision at the sides there. Not as good as the ace beam, but certainly better than the Brine Out. The problem with the Nebo is, on that setting, it steps down after about 30 seconds, and you get this awful flicker, and the UI is a nightmare to deal with. They have made improvements on that, I admit that, but I wouldn't pick that. Then you have the bottom left, which is the Wuben H5, it's a light that I've sort of shouted about quite a few times because it has a lovely wide TIR that just works. Now in that regards, look at the width on that. Just as good as the ace beam, you can see the trees at the left and the right and it also covers the foreground quite nicely there. Not 
maximum amount of push like the Bryanite, but you don't need that when you're hiking. I think it does a decent job, but the price of the of the H5 has gone silly. It's about 70 bucks now, which is getting ludicrous levels. Okay, but that you know that's using the same cell, the 14500, as the uh, the ace beam. So bottom middle night core, that's what we're supposed to be looking at. That this is the light that we're interested in. So straight off, compare that to the Wuben. Width, I think it's slightly better. The tree, if you, in fact, if we zoom in a little bit, not too far, but if we zoom in a little bit on the H5 and the NU21 on the far right of each one, it's picking out that knobbly tree much better, isn't it? Okay, so if we zoom back again, so it, it's better on the width and it almost looks bright. It's certainly, I would say it's more uniform in comparison to the H5, much more uniform, even though it is less it's got less output really it's about 400 on the Wuben 400 on the Nebo Micro and obviously only 360 on the although to be honest the difference between 360 and 400 lumens isn't that much but I think it does a decent job I think that's that's nice for hiking and, and working with and then the Nightcore on the bottom right is the Nightcore NU33 much bigger much heavier more expensive um, it's got a 2200 milliamp hours or at least 2000 milliamp hour battery um, but it's on the limit of what I would Put up with on a two-point headband because it's otherwise it's going to start to flop i think it does a brilliant job it's something like 700 lumens on maximum but what a difference it's giving you there you've got that push in the middle which is definitely pushing further it's definitely pushing further than most of those other lights it's in line with the bryanite in regards to it can see the bridge and the walkway right in the distance there however it's slightly falling off on width even though it's more lumens so you've got to ask yourself what do you want and that 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 light seems to try and do it do it all but it's certainly fine for hiking by and i've done it and it's in my car all the time but it's more expensive and heavier okay so let, let's get rid of that photograph there okay that's gone right so before we, I'll, I'll show you with, with the other lights that i looked at just so you know what they actually look like um, but we need to give it some good and bad points as well. But, we'll, you know, just in regards to those, those last two that we looked at there. So look at the size difference of the NU33. Look, much bigger. So we'll put it like that. Higher, fatter, bigger, heavier. And it's You've got the old style sort of granny's nickel elastic. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's starting to become heavy. Cause, but this is a 2200, I think. Something like 2,000, if I can get it to focus, 2,200 milliamp hours or something like that. Lithium ion, the same. I like it, but it's becoming a little bit heavier. I wish there was something between the two of these. So instead of this being 500 milliamp hours, I wish this was 1,000. I think between the two of these, there's something that there's something there. Because I don't think you need this light to go, to go trail running. I mean, for goodness sake, there's not that much light and extra weight in this. And halfway between the two would be probably a sweet spot. But if you want to go mega, mega minimalist, this is probably the light for you. I uh, also tested it against uh, the Ace Beam, which we talked about before there. Very high CRI. This is only 650 lumens, though. In fact, I think it says, yeah, high 90 plus CRI. It was very high. And it's a 5,000 Kelvin value in the tint smooth reflector so you probably think well I'll, hang on don't you always say tir is best it, it can be for a smaller light up close but this this actually does work quite well uh, beautiful light uh, and i think about 40 odd bucks boom i also tested against the nebo micro but like i said ui is disastrous it's flickers yes i know they fixed the flicker now but they didn't when i got it and the step down is horrific it's like 30 seconds boom right here nearly in the dark boom but it's just an option and only about 20 bucks there's the H5, which has that interesting attachment look. You can rotate it like that. You can rotate it like that. You've got all different all different options. And I love how wide this is, very wide. It, you know, this is very wide as well, but this is also very wide and has a tiny little piercing punch in the middle, uh, about 400 lumens. But there's not a lot of difference when we looked at those side by side, was there? In fact, that, that ended up a little bit more uniform. But just another option for you and because this is all sealed it is more waterproof so if you are expecting big showers you may prefer that also tested against the bryanite which again was very punchy even though it's a tir uses a different it's got a mag base and you've got this added feature of this and all that but you know it depends what you want and the mag charging if you want it and quite a nice i quite like this design of headband where you've got the holes in just allows you to breathe especially if you're running okay so we need to talk about good points and bad points. And then I need to give this a mark out of 10, don't I? So let's look at the good points. 
okay straight off e-lock i think that's an essential um, there was no e-lock on this one which annoyed me um, i knocked them down for that because i thought what is the point of that their idea was well okay one click does nothing you've got to press it twice yeah but I, that doesn't work i've got loads of lights where i put them in my pocket and it's double clicked and, and it still goes on i don't know how it happens it's like when you put a shoelace in your pocket it magically works out how to tie itself into a knot and the same with the things that haven't got an e-lock this does have an e-lock brilliant well done night core that's such an important thing it's extremely lightweight it's only 44 grams it's type c which i love it's also type c to c in other words it has power delivery you can use it whilst charging type a to type c or type c to type c a massive feature that's very important uh, i should have mentioned before actually if if you are charging it and you pull pull this out whilst it's running it flickers i don't think that's a problem with the light i think it's warning you and i think the reason it does that is if you are running this off an external battery pack it's letting you know it's giving you a visual indicator so if you're walking along you've done four hours or whatever your battery packs just run out this will go do, 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 and you think aha because how else would you know that it was it was now running off the battery in there so nice one nice one night core you'll get an extra little a quarter of a point for that well done works well as charging the glow in the dark does work i think white helps with is helps as well just if there's extremely low light and you're looking in your pocket and you're trying to find it i found it easier to find because of this and the glow in the dark it's tir which it works um but there are some bad points with that so the red light i don't think is bright enough and i think it's just due to the constraints of the size and the weight if they were able to up this to about a thousand milliamp hours i think they could have pushed that a bit more maybe just have 11 lumens i think 10 11 lumens is probably better rather than the six that they're sorry the five that they've picked it's a shame that i like the way they've got the ultra low though on the main beam um 360 lumens here's the thing i went out and did a trail run it was wet and when it's wet for people who don't know when it's wet and you are trail running with a light with a low output what tends to happen is when the ground is wet i'm not talking about grass i'm talking about mud it tends to because it's darker it tends to almost absorb the light it's, it's not reflecting it back and it's not there's no ambient not ambient occlusion but ambient light reflection in um, in that area so what i mean is it's absorbing some of that light i don't think if you were to go out running on a technic put it this way if you go on a technical trail when it's wet i don't think this is enough lumens however if you go on a non-technical trail and when i say non-technical i'm talking about like sheer bits like that and damn tree roots that try and trip you up and things like that um it, it'll be fine even in the wet i think it's just enough but i, I wish they'd up that battery and gone for like 450 ish lumens range and i think that would have been better and then you could have maybe pushed for a technical use i'll do some more testing but i think this is borderline because you don't want to twist an angle and that's what happens when you haven't got enough light and especially when you get tired and you're not concentrating and it becomes harder to concentrate or you're busy you know what wiping your forehead and i think that, that, that it's a fine line on how much light I, everyone's different but for me 360 was borderline i wouldn't do a technical trail but i'd do a wet non-technical put it that way so i think it's borderline so i need to give this a mark out of 10 for what they've done i like it but I know there's going to be people saying rubbish, 500 milliamp hours, rubbish. It is, yeah, it is. You know, if you compare it to something like this, but this is massively heavier. For an ultra light, I think they've done a decent job. In fact, here's some footage. I went to um, a local store. There's some footage up there. Look at all those lights. They were all tiny. So I think if they are trying to compete with these very very small lights from Petzl and Black Diamond and all people like that, if that's what they're trying to do, I think they've done a good job because it's it's there's no flicker it's constant uh, i think they call it something like constant current circuits there's no flicker which means it's not cheap it's got a lock it's got a red light that works okay up close it's not high cri or anything but i think they've done a decent job so before i give this a mark here's some testing that i did there you go so there's the test that i did because i thought has it got flicker has it not because that's their claim anyway so i had a look there is no flicker that i can see or capture using any methods that i got and it is not in any risk looking at the graphs so pass well done nightcore okay in regards to the cri in other words color rendering index remember natural daylight is 100 so here we got 69.1 so basically 70 percent it's not down at those worrying 60 percent levels on some of the lights where it really annoys me it's about 70 it's fine it's it's average uh, and if it's just for trail running that's fine that's fine i could live with that 
the tint was 5401 so pretty good and um, it was it's certainly certainly not warm and it but it's certainly not harsh um, lower levels a tiny maybe there's a tiny little bit of green to it but I did most of my testing outdoors so that could be me and my problem but I think they did decent there so let's get rid of that picture there get rid of it okay so I need to give this a mark don't I so right e lock very very lightweight type C type C to C power delivery works well so you're charging in both modes glows in the dark TIR constant there's no flicker whatsoever um, and it's okay, it's a pretty decent price actually and you've got choice of colors if you want it uh, con the only cons are the red lights not bright enough to run by but you could just be really careful and walk sensibly and not be an idiot like I am small cell but that it is it's because it's small and light you can't get a much bigger cell in there that's just that's the game they're playing here and 360 lumens is borderline if you are some the, someone who needs more light you may want to look at something like this or if Nightcore do something in between I think there's an NU25 or something like that um, I may have to get that and have a look so if there is it so you probably want to be here whereas this is borderline but they're trying to go for mega mega lightweight that's what that's all about so mark out of 10 I'm gonna give them let's have a think for what they're trying to do and what they're trying to do is make a ultra lightweight dual beam outdoor headlamp that's exactly what they've done and I would say this competes with all these small small lights you get in a, a big box store um, I'm gonna give this oof, I'm gonna to have to give it an 8 I'm gonna to have to because in order to get more marks they'd have to make it bigger but then you're, you're not you're, it's no longer the thing that it's trying to be because it's all very well saying well I would just you know add this and add that and add a nuclear reactor and uh, yeah okay you can do all of that but then it weighs, ends up weighing a ton doesn't it so for the ethos of ultralight I think they've done well a healthy eight um, I will be using this in fact I mean I have that one in the car and I've got a, an SP40 in the car I might have this one in easy to grab it in one of my backpacks just run easily grab it and use it um, we'll see we'll see or it, it's summer here at the moment so I might do a few more trail runs when it's not so wet and give it more of a chance because like I say when it's not wet light works differently and it and this is probably going to be more than enough we'll see we'll see I'll, I'll let you know okay so eight I think it's well deserved of that there's not a lot of down points and the main down points are capacity which well, it's small, so that's just what you get. And yet it's no good comparing it to something like, you know, yeah, but this one's got loads of capacity. Well, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, but where do you draw the line on weight? Okay, so eight. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, if you've got any questions, stick them down below. I've done loads of comparisons, side-by-sides. I've been out and about, and I've got loads of footage. So let's get on with it. Goodbye.